You've lived a crazy <laughs> life. Tell us about Parliament Funkadelic. Parliament Funkadelic was and is a lifelong dream that I had a chance to fulfill. Mm. And along with the fame uh, comes a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing how fame and, and uh, affect different people. And unfortunately, uh, it, it affected me in good ways and bad ways. Mm. And because of the business and what the business will do to individuals, it's amazing that uh, you can come out of it with your sanity. Yeah. But by the grace of God, I was able to manage to do that without actually taking care or hurting one of my friends. Mm. Tell me about that lifestyle. I mean, you guys were in the top of billboard charts, you know, living a glamorous life. Um, yeah, tell us about that life. <laughs> well, you know, when, you, when you're number one in the world, there's a lot of things that come along with that. But when you can look at the audience and you travel from city to city, it was like a traveling circus. I mean, we had like four buses, uh, four tractor trailer trucks. Uh, we had a one bagel with our own uh, chef and everything. And you just lived a good life. You get spoiled. Mm. And, but you also have to keep your feet on the ground, mm -hmm. you know, because you got to, once the lights go out, the bodyguards are gone, the limousines are gone. You got to deal with this. Yeah with the man, and I like dealing with the man because in the morning, when I, now, when I wake up, I can look in the mirror and say, I like that <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, That's a great feeling. There was a time, as I alluded to, where you had, you were so upset at a mem a, another member of the, of the group, yeah. and we're actually going to get a gun and, and kill this person. Not only we're going, to, I got it. You got it. And we had already put the, the plan in motion. You have to understand, when, when I left here in 66 going to Vietnam, mm. before I left, we signed a contract with Red Lot Records. Okay. And we recorded a song called I Want to Testify and I Can Feel the Ice Melting. We had started recording the, the, the album at the time. Mm -hmm. So when I got back, naturally, I want my money because mm. I had a contract before I left. and. I want to get my, my, my money so I can get going with my life because I was dealing with enough as it was with mm. Vietnam. So when I got back, I demanded a meeting with LeBaron Taylor, George Clinton, and the rest of the guys in the group. Everybody showed up but George. Mm. LeBaron Taylor, who owned the record company, he showed up with boxes and boxes of receipts and checks. And I'm looking at these checks. 70,000 here, 50,000 there, and all of them was going to George. Wow. And even the rest of the guys in the group didn't even know exactly what was going on because they had pockets full of money from personal appearances, so they didn't really know about the business right. in there because George was taking care of that. Mm -hmm. But when I found out that he had spent my money, I got a little upset about it. Yeah. And uh, it was a very difficult situation for me to handle, mm. but it all, it's all in the power of forgiveness. Mm. And that weight was lifted for me, and thank God because of my wife and several other good people around me, I didn't make that fatal mistake because I was headed down that road. You're, enter you're entering into this world where you're thinking more about God, but it takes a, a, a heart surgery that really changes you um, drastically. It was really, bad because it was 1.30 in the morning, the 11th of October, and I started having a heart attack. Wow. And my wife was in Israel at the time. So I prayed to God and I said, Father, I gotta, I gotta go to the hospital. Mm. And I said, if I, if, and they said, you better go now. That's what I'm hearing. And I, then I realized, like I said, well, if that's the case, I gotta, you gotta help me get dressed. Mm. I drove myself to the hospital while I was while having a While you were having a heart attack, attack. wow. And they said uh, it's like an elephant being stepping on your yeah. chest. It's true. But I knew I couldn't wait 45 minutes for EMS to get there because of my training in Vietnam and my knowledge of having a heart attack. I knew the best thing for me to do was to get to the hospital immediately. Although I wouldn't recommend anyone else to no. do it. <laughs> I mean, you're not supposed to. But I got to the hospital just in time. And, and when I got there, they were aware of my, uh, my, my, my procedures and my health. And uh, then they, they put me in the emergency room. And 
they flew a medical, medical helicopter in to fly me from Windsor to Mississauga to the Trillium Center. And I was one of the first ones to have what they call an, uh, a beating heart surgery, where they operate on your heart without actually taking it out. But how did that change your relationship with God or, or help your relationship with God? It, it, it changed it because uh, I had promised him that when my career was done, that I would spend the rest of my days serving him. Wow. But then I extended my career career a little bit longer than what I should have. So that was his way of letting me know, okay. And I remember when the helicopter was descending, I remember saying, Father, if you help me through this one, mm. I'll spend the rest of my days serving you. Mm. And he did. Mm. I mean, he's brought me through so many things. Well, this is it. You, you know, battled cancer in 2004. Um, your wife of 44 years yeah. diagnosed with cancer and passed away in Well, I had to be there for her. You know, what, what is that like, you, you know, suffering through PTSD? All of these different things that happened in your life. You went from being at the top of stardom <laughs> to now all of a sudden struggling health-wise and nursing your dying wife. Yeah. How was your faith challenged through all of that? Or was it? It was challenged. Yeah. Uh, but you know what? I never questioned him. Mm. Uh, Why? Be because I accepted what was coming my way. And the reason I did that is because <clears throat> years ago, when this guy was born, I didn't have anything to do with that. Mm. You see, that, that was, that's, this is me, and here he is. Mm. And, and, and he knows what he put there. Mm. But it's up to me to make the right decisions as I travel this journey trying to get to, mm. get to him. Big decision. And that's what's so pleasing to me today is I know who I am. I know who he is, and I understand the relationship that we have. Mm. And I can guarantee you there is not a more comfortable feeling that any man walking this earth can have than what I have right ah. now. And there's not a drug that can do it. <laughs> Whiskey won't do it. Money won't do it. Women won't do it. But he can do it. And you know that because you tried all uh, of that stuff. You better believe me. <laughs> you stepped away from music for a long time. And 14 then, years. And then God gave you some new music, and you have this new album called It's Not Too Late. Tell us about that process. Okay. Um, I, this is after thyroid cancer and all of that. Uh, but this CD came to me in a dream. Mm. The dream concept was the bluest sky that I've ever seen in my life. There was gold bars coming from the sky all the way down to the earth. Mm. There was rays of sunshine coming down through uh, uh, the gold bars. There was a white robe, which I could telepathically, I thought it was Jesus. I could tell it was Jesus. Mm -hmm. No hands, no feet, mm. no face. He was standing next to a gray robe. No hands, no face, no feet. And he was standing waiting for this gray robe, this entity, wh whoever it was, to turn to him. Mm. And in the meantime, I'm waking up. I said, wait a minute, I can't wake up. I got to go back in. I wanna, it's like you're swimming. You want to go back into the dream because I wanted to shake this person and tell him, hey, Jesus is standing right there beside you. Turn to him. And I think that's where it all came. The, the line that came was, it's not too late. No, don't hesitate. It's not too late to ask Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior. And from that, the CD, lyric by lyric by note, was born. <laughs>